right guys it's paint day this is gonna be a pain but we're gonna get through it so with painting um, it's just uh, you gotta do things in the right order so I'm gonna start in the middle with a dash bar I'm gonna do everything I can um, with a spray gun so I have my Devilbis this is what I'm using So I had a small touch-up gun, just like a little Harbor Freight one. It actually works really well because it's small and you can really get in on all these little areas, but it dropped and the cup broke off the thing. And I don't know, it was one of those deals where it's kind of out of commission. So I have to use my nice gun and it's just a little more bulky to, to carry around. But with that being said, we're gonna start off in the car and I'm gonna spray as much as possible, okay? So pretty much everything we spray is everything we'll be able to see. So I'm gonna spray, we're gonna do two coats. So what we're gonna do is spray everything we can. We're gonna do our paint spatter. And then afterwards, we're gonna go with a brush once everything's cured and hit all the areas that we're not gonna be able to paint. Like I'm not gonna be able to get up and back here. So what we'll do is once everything's cured, we'll, uh, we'll just take the um, uh, a foam brush and we'll just hand paint any of those areas. So the spatter in those areas isn't really gonna be a big deal because no one will ever see it. So I'm not too worried about that. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll go through afterwards and just hit up hit up all those areas. That'll be once this is fully dried. I'm gonna give it a day at least. I'm gonna take tomorrow off, let this car just sit here and uh, get everything um, cured and hardened. Uh, with that being said, the prep work on this is pretty significant. I sanded it all yesterday, got all the rust off, wire wheeled it. I mean, it had surface rust because it's, you know, almost 80% humidity down here. And I came back this morning and of course there was another very, very light coat of rust on it. So I re-sanded the whole thing to make sure it's good, good. And now I just uh, acetoned the whole cage and we're ready. So I'm probably not gonna film too much because I don't want my camera out here in case overspray and stuff. Um, I don't want to have it stick to the lens or anything like that, but it's not exciting stuff. Just imagine someone painting tubing and sweating all over the place. So we're going to do that and hopefully get this thing all black within the next hour or so with our two coats. All right, just want to go over what products I'm using to paint this cage. Uh, for the bare metal aspects, I am using SPI epoxy primer. This is a one-to-one -one ratio uh, epoxy. This is like a satin black, uh, semi-gloss black. Very strong stuff. This is like a rock once it's uh, finished. And I it, believe it's 24 hours. Um, the, the cure time until you can put the paint on it is within 24 hours. So there's plenty of time to get the paint on there and it will adhere nicely. And then for the non-bare metal, we are going to use pour 15. So any spots, you know, all along here, all this, we're gonna, we'll use pour 15 on that. And that stuff, you can actually roll it on, no problem. It covers really nice. And that's what we're doing. So that's just a couple products. Uh, the paint we're actually using is a single stage paint. I got this as our local Napa Genuine Paints. So this is a single stage, uh, dries gloss and it has a hardener so it's these are already pre-reduced so this is eight paint eight parts of paint two parts of reducer one part of hardener that you add right before you well in this case we're going to fling it on and that's it so i'm going to get this epoxy primer all mixed up and we're going to uh get some primer on this sucker Well guys, here it is. It's black. The paint's still flashing off a little bit. And since it's epoxy, it will it's kind of dry to the touch within a couple hours, like two hours. Uh, you can, you know, kind of handle it. You don't really want to like, you know, go digging your nail into it. So I try to 360 all the tubes, that way there's no bare metal exposed anywhere. And you know, all these little up in the, in here and all this craziness will really try to jam some uh, epoxy up in there and then we're ready for the spatter i'm not sure if i'll get to it tonight uh, and i know there might have been some confusion i showed you guys pour 15 
when I was showing you the colors and I did, was going to use Pour 15 originally on the roll cage. However, I had some SPI epoxy, which is Southern Polyurethanes Incorporated. That's the company. I had some, it's, it's in the trash now. I had some of that epoxy laying around and that stuff's a really good product and it sprays really smooth. And if you thought Pour 15 was strong, this stuff, you have to grind it off. I mean, it is, it's legit. So that's why I decided to use, I had like a quart uh, left total. Um, so that's what I wound up using on this job here and it came out really good. I'm very happy. This is the bare epoxy finish, so you guys know. I mean, it is slick stuff and it's just really nice. So if you're doing any kind of chassis work, I mean, or any bare metal work, this epoxy is fantastic. And it's better than any kind of primer that is out now, in my opinion. Uh, the epoxy is just that much stronger. And let's say if this was a body panel on a car and it was all bare metal, what they what's recommended now is you epoxy coat it, you wait, I think it's a day at least, and then you can 2K prime it or go right straight to body filler if you're doing something like that. So. Just a tip, if you guys are interested, I'm not sponsored by this company or anything like that, but Southern Polyurethanes Inc. They're out of Georgia, I believe. Awesome company, and they have some great products. A lot of hot rod guys use this stuff, especially on frame and chassis type work. It's really good. Well, we're at the point where we're ready for spatter. I'm not gonna lie to you, I am terrified to do this right now because this came out so good that I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin it. Well, I'm gonna start in the back at least. I'm just gonna do this little area and see how it looks on a, on the, you know, cage here. Oh, man. You know, if you have a plan, you gotta stick to it, but it came out so nice. This black is smooth and it's sprayed. And I'll tell you what, it was a royal pain getting all up and all up on the back sides and under and everything but we got it all at least as far as i can see i'm sure when we're working on stuff we'll find bare spots maybe here and there but for the most part it's looking good so i don't know i guess i'm just gonna have to go for it pray for me all right kind of had to work fast or i'm working fast but this is coming out freaking dope Dude. So you just start flinging and see how it goes. I absolutely love it though. All right, we're gonna keep moving before this paint hardens up on me. It's hot out. Woo! Guys, this came out, in my opinion, so freaking awesome. I can't even, I paint all over myself. It's like a paint grenade went off in here. This paint job is so sick. It's exactly what I was hoping for. I cannot wait for this to all dry. It's really hard to see because it's like dark out, you know what I mean? But this spatter job is freaking pretty awesome. So keep in mind, all this in here is all gonna be satin black. So just the cage is gonna have the spatter job. That's just, you know, overkill. Or over, over spatter, but I don't know what we're calling it right now, but I'm pretty fired up right now. I do have a little bit more paint left. So the inside was a little tricky, like getting up under there. You'll never be able to see it anyway so i don't think it's a big deal but if there's any spots that we need to touch up or if there's a little too much of one color because you can kind of so what i did was i just started winging one color then i do the next color i do the other like here there seems to be a lot of green but also it doesn't matter like it's just kind of part of it so i don't know i i mean we'll just we're just gonna send it i guess but this is so freaking cool it's definitely a wild one There's no rhyme or reason to it. The only thing you have to do if you're doing a paint job like this, which I've never done before, 
is do not do the same motion every time. So if you're gonna do do like left, right, up, down, hard, slow, you know what I mean? And just uh, just freaking send it. But I'm pumped up, man. This is gonna be awesome. Guys, this came out so sick. One of the funny things about it is though, I built this cage and I TIG welded the whole cage, which took me double the time, really, double the time to do it because I did that. And you can't see any of them. Oh my God, it drives me. I could have saved so much time if I just MIG welded this and had this plan to begin with, but it is what it is. It's just, <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Oh, where's the weld? You can't even tell. Ah, <laughs> that's kind of hilarious and sad at the same time. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I noticed that and, well, it's just uh, <laughs> one of those deals. Thank you so much guys for tuning in. I cannot wait to get this car back uh, together. I'm gonna take a day or two to let this cure and I got a bunch of house projects going on and a baby shower and all that stuff to deal with. So I kind of have a little bit to do this week. Oh, I also have a roll bar to make. So this is probably gonna be a little bit slower than normal, but this is a huge step in the right direction. This also got me really thinking about a set of wheels I have and how I can uh, paint those and get those on this car to look really, really cool. So I'll share that with you guys once I find a color that works, but man, this thing's freaking nuts. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate your support. I'll catch up with you next time.